Good afternoon, everyone, and happy 4th of July to you all. Thank you so much for joining us today as we celebrate America's 241st birthday. It's a time traditionally set aside for thinking about this nation's declaration of independence and our freedom as a country and as individuals. We're gathered in Huntley Hall, named for Dr. Henry Clay Huntley, a longtime village resident and volunteer. And joining us is Mrs. Huntley, who recently celebrated her birthday. Ellen, want to give a wave? Across America, residents of cities and small towns alike will come together for parades, patriotic songs, and proud displays of our national heritage. Here in Friendship Heights, we carry on those grand traditions of sound, spectacle, and sentiment with our own special festivities. I'm grateful that our community is able to continue our traditional Independence Day events because they help unite the residents of our nine high-rise buildings with an old-fashioned spirit that echoes our national pride. One of the Fourth of July sentiments I like is from the former Senate chaplain, Peter Marshall, who wrote, may we think of freedom not as the right to do as we please, but as the opportunity to do what is right. As we think about our freedoms this afternoon and all that we cherish, please remember our active military servicemen and women and our veterans to whom we owe so much. If you're, if you're able to stand, I'd like to ask all of the veterans here to rise so that we can acknowledge you. Your hosts for today's celebration are the all-volunteer Village Council members, Michael J. Dorsey, Chairman, John Mertens, Vice Chairman, who I believe is outside, Paula J. Durbin, Secretary, Kathleen G. Cooper, Treasurer, Our newest member, Carolina Zumaran Jones, parliamentarian. David O. Lewis, historian. And I'm your mayor, Melanie Rose White. <laughs> this event would not be possible without our hardworking village staff who give up a big part of their holiday so that we can enjoy ours. Our staff includes Julian Mansfield, village manager. Bob Shapiro, assistant village manager and finance director. Betty Artizoni, facilities manager. Jenny Fogarty, associate program director. Ann Hughes O'Neill, Associate Program Director. Tracy Biagas, Front Desk Supervisor. And our Front Desk Receptionists, Annie Natali, Pauline Martin, Jackie Koenig, and Rajni Chatterjee. And we want to send out a special thanks to the maintenance staff from Galley Services under the direction of Hen Hector Garcia, Village Maintenance Supervisor, Sandra Ramos, Maintenance, and Franklis Franklin Bonilla, Area Services Manager. <laughs> and other providers include the Dixie Stompers, who are providing your musical entertainment today, Courtyard by Marriott, who is providing hot dogs, rolls, and condiments. Clements Bakery, who will be providing cupcakes after we're done up here. Shady Oaks Amusement Train Ride. Amusements Unlimited, 
popcorn and snow cone machines, cast of Thousand, the fortune teller, and finally Tutti Frutti, the clown, who is providing glitter tattoos and bubbles. We have a number of individuals in our audience who are candidates for the Montgomery County Council. Bill Conway, who is running for an at-large seat. Bill, if you want to give a wave. <laughs> Reggie Oldak, who is running for a seat in District 1. <laughs> Jennifer, I'm sorry. Evan Glass, who is running for an at-large seat. And Meredith Wellington, who is running for a seat in District 1. We're also joined today by Jennifer Hosey, Montgomery County Democratic Central Committee. And we also have some special guests that we would like to give a chance to speak with you from the Bethesda Chevy Chase Rescue Squad, Chief Ned Sherburn. <laughs> from the Montgomery County Police Department, representing Captain David Falsinelli is Captain O'Neill Ormsby, Montgomery County Police. Hello, on behalf of Montgomery County Police. It's so glad to be here, seeing so many residents. I tell you uh, that this town is a beautiful community. It's a wonderful cross-section of America. And we, as the Montgomery County Police Officers, were so privileged not only to be Montgomery County Police Officers and serve the, the people of Montgomery County, but I'm blessed to be here with you today. And it's my honor to be able to serve you. I've been a police officer for 21 years, and I look forward to continuing to provide a, a great quality service to all the people of Montgomery County. Thank you very much for having me here today. U.S. District Court Judge Peter Massetti, who is here with his wife, Susan. Uh, happy Fourth, everybody. I had no idea I was going to be called to the mic. Uh, but I do want to tell you one little story, because I mentioned it to the mayor and a few others as I came up here. I was the attorney for Friendship uh, Heights maybe 35, 40 years ago. And one of the things we challenged in courts was whether you, it could be one man, one vote, instead of giving the property owners more than one vote. And we won that. So congratulations to all of you today, too. <laughs> From our neighbor, the town of Somerset, former village resident and longtime friend, Jeffrey Slavin. Good afternoon, everybody. So, Mayor White, I am so glad you brought up freedom because freedom is what today is all about. And our kids just read the Declaration of Independence as they do every day, and it was a great reminder of that. And, and we're all in elected office trying to preserve our freedom and working very hard. We work very closely with, with Friendship Heights. Uh, I also am very proud of our most prominent fighter for freedom, Attorney General Brian Frosch, who wouldn't be here today. But he, but just, just think about all the tremendous things he's doing to protect our freedom uh, in, his, in, in office. He's doing an amazing job, and he, he couldn't be here today, but we're so proud of him, and as the neighbor, I'm sure you are too, and thank you very much. From the Montgomery County Council, Roger Berliner, President. Well, good afternoon to you. I've had the privilege of representing you on the County Council for the past 11 years, and it has indeed been a great privilege. This is one of those communities that is so very special, in part because, as people say in the trade, you are a naturally occurring retirement community. 
Okay. And as one who is getting real close to wanting to join you, I say to you, it is a pleasure to represent you, and you have a great quality of life. And in Montgomery County, we pride ourselves on having a great quality of life. And regardless of what's taking place at the federal level in Montgomery County, we stand for the Montgomery County way, and I know you do too. So thank you very much. Mark Elrich, Pres uh, Councilman. So this is always one of the fun events and probably the last public gathering we do other than fireworks on, on this day. And I'm always happy to come out to Friendship Heights. My first encounter with this community was when you all were working on the master plan back in 1998. And I worked with community leaders to make sure you got a master plan that made sense. And I'm always, you know, I've always tried to look out for this community and make sure that the county does its best by you. You certainly serve the county well, and this is just a wonderful corner of the universe here. And so thank you for putting on this party for all of us. George Leventhal, Councilman. Good afternoon, Friendship Heights. Wonderful to be with you. I don't know if any of you heard, there was a distinguished historian on the radio early this morning talking about how the United States is more divided today than at any time since the 1850s. But fortunately here in Montgomery County, we are not united. We are dedicated to shared success for everyone in our community. We have people from every different background who speak every different language, who worship every different faith tradition. But the great thing is we all get along so well. And so we are going to continue to be a model for the rest of the country in how to build community, in how we can all succeed and thrive and grow and be prosperous together as one community, leaving no one behind. Happy Fourth of July. Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking back and seeing all the faces that I remember and all the times that I've been here. And I want to thank all of you for coming out. This is really what the fourth independence is about. Uh, it is about something else that we should keep in mind. The mayor mentioned it a little bit earlier. That is to pay tribute to our veterans, the people who are making it possible, the men and women who are serving not only here throughout the United States, but literally around the world. We should pay tribute to them for the great things that we have in this country. No matter what is happening at the federal level, we have great representation here. Look at the great delegations you have for this particular district, all the members of the county council, our outstanding member of Congress. This is a wonderful place in which to be, a wonderful place in which to live because you reflect so much of what is about Montgomery County. Congratulations. Happy Fourth of July. Thank you. Representing Maryland Comptroller Peter Francho is Andrew Friedson. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'm Andrew Friedson. I serve as Senior Advisor to the Comptroller. Uh, Comptroller Francho couldn't be here, uh, but just wanted to extend a uh, happy 4th of July. We were here uh, together, the Comptroller and I, for the Salsa Night, uh, which was a, a great night. And it's just always great to be here in Friendship Heights, particularly on Independence Day, which uh, really feels more like Interdependence Day, where 13 colonies become one country, where citizens come together to become one community. And there's very few communities in Montgomery County across the country that demonstrate that better than Friendship Heights. So thank you very much, and happy Fourth of July. Maryland State Senator Susan Lee from District 16. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for always welcoming me here and making me feel warm and embraced and also working on legislation with me in Annapolis to uplift and improve the quality of life of all our people. And I just want you to know I uh, represent District 16 with my wonderful colleagues, Delegate Bill Frick and Delegate Mark Corman and Delegate Ariana Kelly. Ariana couldn't be here, but she wanted to give our greetings. 
I want you to know that uh, with all the uncertainty in Washington, D.C., not knowing what's going to happen to our environment, our affordable health care, our constitutional rights, be assured that we in the Maryland General Assembly are partnering with our wonderful congressional members, like Congressman Jamie Raskin, who is here today, and Senator uh, Chris Van Hollen, Senator Cardin, and all our other congressional members to stand up tall for Maryland. We will not stand back. We will fight for you. And I just wanted you to know we will do all that we can to stand up for Maryland. Uh, you know, this country was built by people from such diverse backgrounds, and they made America great, and that's what we're celebrating today. And you and I together, we will take America to even greater heights. So thank you again for the privilege and honor of representing you in the Maryland State Senate, and happy 4th of July. Ms. Mayor, why don't you come around here? I can't see you. <laughs> yeah. The County Executive of Montgomery County, Maryland, and County Council award this certificate to Melanie, Mayor Melanie Rose White in recognition and appreciation of your 30 years of dedicated service and leadership to the Village of Friendship Heights as mayor, council member, village newsletter editor. Congratulations on reaching this milestone and for your continued make, uh, and for, you, for continuing to make Montgomery County Friendship Heights, a great place in which to live and work. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> As you all know, our village center operations rely heavily on both paid staff and a dedicated core of volunteers. Each year, the village council honors elected individual, selected individuals who have made this community a better place through their dedicated service. Today, the council is happy to present certificates of appreciation to two special women from Brighton Gardens. And our first certificate goes to Eleanor Neiman. Eleanor, you don't need to stand up if you don't want to. <laughs> Eleanor's certificate reads, with deep gratitude, the Friendship Heights Village Council presents this outstanding community service certificate to Eleanor Neiman in recognition of your dedicated service and commitment as a volunteer for the Friendship Heights Community Advisory Committee. The council greatly appreciates your time and leadership. Thank you very much, Eleanor. And we also have an award for Barbara Turlington. And Barbara's certificate reads, the Friendship Heights Village Council, with deep gratitude, presents this outstanding community service certificate to Barbara Turlington in recognition of your dedicated service and commitment as a volunteer for the Friendship Heights Community Advisory Committee. The council greatly appreciates your time and leadership. Thank you, Barbara. And on behalf of the entire community and Village Council, I just want to extend a very heartfelt thanks to these two women. They really make an effort to come out to the meetings. I know it's not easy. And uh, from the bottom of our heart, we are grateful for your service. Thirty-six years ago, the Village Council established the Elizabeth Skull Outstanding Community Service Award. 
Betty Skull had served faithfully on the Montgomery County Council for 11 years and championed the needs of our minority populations, the elderly, residents with disabilities, and those with special needs. She was a strong believer in affordable housing and a defender of communities and their elected local governments. She believed she had the right combination of qualities for the position of council member. She considered herself politically moderate. She felt she had common sense and was totally honest. And she was unafraid. Anyone in this office needs those characteristics, she said. The Elizabeth Skull Award is presented annually to an outstanding public official who has served his or her local community in the fine tradition of Betty Skull and her many acts of kindness, dedication, and unselfish service. This year, the Friendship Heights Village Council voted to honor all three of our Maryland state delegates who work so hard on the village's behalf. Delegates Bill Frick, Ariana Kelly, and Mark Corman. Ariana is unable to be with us today. The Village Council thanks our state delegates for their help in getting the $100,000 bond bills approved in Annapolis. We use this money to renovate the Village Center, including the beautiful acoustic paneling and new floor in this room. Friendship Heights has had a wonderful relationship with our delegates over the years. They attend so many of our community events and keep us up to date on their activities. And the village is deeply grateful for your support. And now if I could ask the delegates to join me. The Elizabeth Skull Outstanding Community Service Award presented to C. William Frick, Maryland State Delegate, July 4th, 2017 by the Friendship Heights Village Council. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor, and to the Council for this recognition. It is really an honor. I have had the privilege of representing this district for 10 years now. Uh, when I started, I had uh, one Fricklet and another one on the way. There they are in the corner, wave guys. Now the first Fricklet's nearly going to junior high school, and the other one's just a terror, but that's to be expected. Uh, but we have seen so many folks honored with this award. It really means a lot. As I'm probably wrapping up my time representing this district, it really is very special. And I think what's best, Madam Mayor, is that you're recognizing the teamwork of this team. And that's really what you've seen. District 16 has had terrific representation well before I got here with uh, Brian Frosch and Nancy Kopp uh, and Bill Braunrot. And it will continue to do so after I'm not here uh, with Delegate Corman and Delegate uh, Ariana Kelly. So thank you so much. And obviously with our great state senator, Susan Lee. So thank you. It is a privilege to get to work with uh, your your incredible leadership and the staff here that are exceptional. Thanks very much. And the Elizabeth Skull Outstanding Community Service Award presented to Mark Corman, Maryland State Delegate, July 4th, 2017, by the Friendship Heights Village Council. Congratulations, Mark. <laughs> Well, thank you very much to the whole village. I can't believe I've now been doing this long enough to start winning plaques like this, but I guess I'm towards the end of my first term, uh, and that's what happens. I, you know, it's always great to uh, come to this event and work with your village. And we don't only work with the political leadership, the council members and the mayor and the staff, Julian and his team, but we also work with all of you. You're in our offices, you're in our voicemail boxes, you're in our email inboxes. Uh, you come visit, you lobby us, you talk to us about the issues that matter to you. And that's really what makes uh, democracy work, which is important to think about on a day like today. This is the best event. Politicians love it because it's inside. The hot dogs are free. Nothing is more patriotic than free hot dogs on the 4th of July. I had four just to prove that point myself. So thanks very much for having us, and thanks for this award. It really is, uh, means a lot. We are also very honored today to be joined by Jamie Raskin, United States Congressman.
Mayor White, thank you very much. Um, I don't have my certificate with me. My certificate's in my heart, but it's coming back. I hope it didn't get vetoed or something down in Washington. Uh, but I, um, I'm thrilled that everybody is here on this hot day. I've taken to saying on Capitol Hill, it's not the heat, it's the stupidity. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, it's a beautiful event uh, that moves my heart a lot to be here with you guys. And, um, you know, before America, all of the governments on earth were kings and queens. And, um, you know, the kings said they got their powers from God, and then under them were the nobility and the church, and the very bottom were the people, the rabble. And America turned it upside down and said, we the people, we the people, that's the source of all the power. Uh, the people are sovereign, and those of us who uh, aspire to and attain to public office, like the great people here from District 16, uh, Senator Lee and Delegate Corman and Delegate Frick and Ariana Kelly, all of us are nothing but the servants of the people. The people are sovereign. And um, on the 4th of July, I just reflect that we're in a country that's defined not by virtue of being one party or one ideology or one race or one religion or one ethnicity, but we have one constitution and one Bill of Rights that bring all of us together. So I'm here to say happy birthday to America, to celebrate with all my great friends in Friendship Heights. I know there's also some birthdays in the house. My friend Aileen Klein's mom is turning 90 today, born on the 4th of July. Um, and happy birthday to any other 4th of July babies out there. And uh, I, I leave you with the words of a great American patriot, uh, Tom Paine. Um, and I'm going to update his language a little bit for modern sensibilities. But he said, um, and this was at the time of the revolution, and he said, these are the times that try the souls of men and women. And the, the summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will shrink from the service of their country and their cause. But those who stand with us now will win the love and the favor and the affection of every man and every woman. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered, but we have this saving consolation. The more difficult the struggle, the more glorious in the end is our victory. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. And now as our program concludes, I'd like to ask those of you who are able to stand to please rise and sing God Bless America along with the Dixie Stompers Band. <laughs>
Good afternoon. Welcome to the town of Somerset's annual 4th of July celebration. As almost always, the sun always shines on Somerset. Yes, let's have some applause. And um, as we always do, we will start with the presentation of the colors. This year, the presentation is by two members of Brownie Troop number 1864, Iona Maroon and Clara Bloodworth, along with our own town manager, Rich Charnovich. So we salute. We will sing, we will all sing the national anthem, followed by singing the Somerset anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land And the home of the brave. In the shadows of our nation's home, there lies a special place. Born when a century turned its page and grown with timeless grace, where neighbors live neath noble trees and friends are made we won't forget. We call it home, this special place, our sound of Somerset. All right, ladies and gentlemen, remember, we'll do it again next year. And it was inspired by the Medden family, who lives on Warwick Place, and also our great former mayor, Walter Bear. And now we will uh, invite all of the elected officials from our county and our state to come forward and greet us with your special message for the day because we are all so proud the day of Declaration of Independence to live in a democracy where we get to be represented by the people. Let's start with our, our own leader, our county executive, Ike Leggett. For many years I've traveled all over Montgomery County, but seldom, if ever, I've had an opportunity to go to a town in Montgomery County with its own song. <laughs> this is a first, so congratulations. Let me first of all uh, thank all of you for coming out for this very, very wonderful tradition here. Uh, let me also acknowledge and thank the many people that we have throughout our country and around the world who are fighting for our freedoms. Uh, that is the men and women in our armed services. And so we thank them for their service. All of our veterans, uh, you are here from our elected officials. I'm delighted that they are here. Uh, my good friend from Baltimore County, Calvin Kevin is the county executive. We work well in the state of Maryland. He's the president of the Maryland Association of Counties as well. So congratulations. I look forward to seeing you again very near future. Thank you very much and happy for County Executive Kevin Kamenitz from Baltimore County, who is president of the Maryland Association of Counties, so he does represent all of us. Thank you, Mayor Slavin, and I have to tell you, I'm here because Mayor Slavin invited me to see how real patriots celebrate July 4th in the town of Somerset. <laughs> Mayor Slavin, as always, you've done an impressive job putting this together, your entire town, your council, but I'm also glad to be uh, with such honored uh, people, my colleagues, uh, 
County Executive Ike Leggett, who uh, is here with his wife, Catherine, by the way, and you get bonus points for that as well. <laughs> and uh, we've got our friends from the County Council and the State Senate and delegates who are here. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Thank Happy you. Fourth. Thank you so much. Now we will hear from our own fantastic State Senator, Susan Lee. Thank you, Mayor Slavin. Uh, Senator Susan Lee, I'm here with my wonderful colleague, Delegate Mark Horman, who's here. From, you will hear from him. Ariana Kelly and uh, Delegate Bill Frick. But we're really honored and privileged to be here to celebrate July 4th with you. Uh, I, w I want you to know that um, our country is a work in progress. And people from all diverse backgrounds have made this country great, and you all will make it even greater to take it to higher, to higher heights, because we're already great. But I want to tell you something. With all the uncertainty going on in Washington, I want you to know that we in Maryland, my colleagues in the General Assembly, in the County Council, in other parts of the state, and our wonderful Attorney General, Brian Frosch, we are standing up for Maryland, and we are standing up for America. And I thank you so much for letting us celebrate July 4th with you today. Thank you. And as everybody knows, Senator Lee's predecessor was our own resident, Brian Frosch, who is the fantastic crusading attorney general who is making us proud. He is elsewhere in Maryland today, but his wife, Marcy Frosch, is going to come forward as a resident. Hi, everybody. Brian is in Baltimore all day today, but he wanted me to send warmest regards. Uh, if you took a break from the media, uh, you might want to check out the post today because he is definitely standing his ground, so to speak. Uh, but he, <laughs> thank you. But uh, the most important message is enjoy the Fourth of July, and he sends his best to you all. Thank you. Uh, now we will hear from Delegate Mark Horman, our own. District 16 delegate, part of Susan Lee's team. Hello, everybody. I'm Delegate Mark Corman. I represent this district along with delegates Bill Frick and Ariana Kelly. Folks of my political persuasion have taken a saying, you know, now more than ever we should reflect on July 4th. But I'll be honest, there's never a bad time, never a bad year to think about what July 4th means, think about what this country means, and to listen to some kids read the Declaration of Independence, which is a great tradition here in the town of Somerset. Thanks so much for having us. Have a great 4th of July. And uh, when does the egg drop race start? That's what I'm really looking forward to. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to welcome a longtime council member, Montgomery County at large, council member George Leventhal. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. Appreciate it. Happy Fourth of July, everyone. First of all, uh, my colleague, council member Nancy Florine, who never misses this event, is busy enjoying being a grandmother today. She's not here, but she asked me to give special greetings to the town of Somerset. I don't know if all of you were listening to the radio this morning. A distinguished historian said that the United States is more divided today than at any time since the 1850s. But I'm so proud to represent Montgomery County because we are not divided. In Montgomery County, we want shared success for everyone. We want to bring everyone along. And Ike Leggett deserves a great deal of credit for making sure that Montgomery County is a welcome and safe environment for everyone, no matter where you were born, no matter what language you speak at home, no matter what faith tradition you worship in, we all have this in common. We chose this place to be our home, Montgomery County, Maryland. What a special opportunity it is to be here with you and to celebrate Independence Day. Thank you and let me know if I can ever be of service to you. Thank you. Thank you, elected officials, for your inspirational messages and greetings, and we will carry them with us throughout the year and see you again next year. Uh, each year, the fourth graders at Somerset Elementary School participate in the If I Were Mayor contest. And as you may or may not know, there are about 100 kids at the school, and every year we select one essay, one winner, for, from the town. Um, this year our judges were Barbara Morenas. Is Barbara here? Right over here. Vicki Frank. There's Vicki and Joy Abel. And we each read all of the essays and then selected one 
And the winner this year was, is uh, Peter Kumar. Peter, are you here? Yeah. Let's have a big round of applause for Peter. Woo! Come on up. I, I have to say, the essays this year were wonderful. They really were. And I think the kids worked unusually hard this year. And uh, it was very difficult for the judges to pick one and because the competition was so stiff. So we should all give, again, another big round of applause for Peter. And Peter is going to read his essay to you now. All right, before I begin, I'd like to thank the mayor, uh, the council that let me speak here today, and Ms. Bacar and Ms. Reed for giving me all the support. Actually, Peter, I should, you're right. I should explain that the question this year, which was actually quite suitable for Somerset, was if we were to build a community center, how would we, how would the town go about that? How would we include everyone? How would we make sure that it was suitable for everyone? And, uh, and that's a pretty difficult question. And, and Peter, did, again, did a wonderful job of answering it. All right. If I were mayor, I would. If I were mayor, I would build a community center with events and services for people of all ages. My vision is that everyone in the town bonds and has fun. For children, our center will have services like language lessons in Spanish, French, and Chinese. So, so people can learn many different languages to understand each other better. Some high schoolers will babysit younger children at the center. You can also rent a room for birthday parties. There will be Kool-Aid Fridays and Milk and Cookies Mondays on the front lawn of the center, too. The elderly will be another focus group. They will have card games and bingo. There will be water aerobics in the town pool. We will also have the buddy team, where kids and adults team up with the elderly at the center to go on field trips. The town will meet every month for six months to design the center. Everyone will be invited. Meetings will be video recorded for anyone who could not make it. We will, we will have the children's and the elderly services designed by groups that include the children and the elderly. Writing this essay reminded me of a book, I Am Malala. The Taliban take over a Pakistani town where Malala lives. The townspeople have no way of being a community because the Taliban think big meetings of people could have the power to overpower them. This is why I think e even being able to meet and talk with people in safe places is special. A community center is powerful when it just makes it possible for all people to come together. Happy Fourth of July. Excellent job, Peter. And now I think you can all see why he was chosen to be the winner of the Somerset If I Were Mayor contest. Yeah, not, that's right. I say President of the United States is in his future. Because what an incredible young man. And we're so proud he's from our town. Next, something you've all been waiting for. So a few years ago, our outstanding staff person, Nicole Ventura, suggested that we have a cupcake decorating contest. And now it's in its third, I believe, third year. And now is the time we're going to announce the winner. It's become a very popular contest. The competition was rough. And I'm going to call the chair of the committee, Bruce Tully, forward to announce the winners. And after that, the good news is that everyone is invited to eat the cupcakes. Good afternoon. Well, as always, it was a very, very difficult decision. But we have winners, and I think overall, all of the winners will be all of you, because afterwards, there is a great many delicious cupcakes in there. 
But without further ado, I will start with the third place winner. And the third place winner goes to the Rodriguez family. Can they come up, please? The Rodriguez family. Yeah. An excellent job and well done. Hello, the Rodriguezes. An applause, please, for the young baker. Come up. And here is your ribbon presented by the mayor. And a gift. Thank you very much. The second place winner, the Medine family. The Medine family, please come forward. The Medins. That's also the family that inspired the Somerset anthem. Congratulations. Good job. Good job. And of course, we have a winner, and today they are the Angel family. Will the Angel family please come forward? Yeah. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Here they are. And here they are. Come right up here. Okay, great. And that's the names of your And for the rest, where are the rest of the committee? We have Phyllis, Carol, and Peter. Thank you all very much. Thank you to the, to the judges. And next year, anyone here can volunteer to be a judge. Uh, and now we will turn to the highlight of our afternoon, which is the reading of the Declaration of Independence by our Somerset young people and students. And I want to thank Chair Toomey for once again organizing this incredible opportunity. In Congress, July 4th, 1776. The unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America states. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with one another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, and a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them. To the separations. Thank you. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. And to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its power in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. When a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object invents a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necess necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. Thank you. 
The history of the present king of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and user patients, all having in direct object an establishment of absolute tyranny over these states. To prove it, let facts be submitted to a candid world. He has refused his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of intermediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained, and when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature, the right inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representatives' houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such, dissolution, after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers incapable of annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise. The state, re the state remaining in the meantime exposed to all the dangers of invasion from without and confusion and convulsions within. He has endeavored to prevent the populations of these states for the purpose of obstructing laws for naturalizing for foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage the migrations hither and raising conditions of new appropriation lands. Okay, wait, just one second. No, come here. It's okay. He's coming. Am I going? Yep. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent laws for establishing judiciary. judiciary powers. He has made judges his dependence on his will alone for tenure of their offices and the amount of payment of their salaries. He has rejected a multitude of new officers and sent new swarms of officers to arrest our people and eat up their substance. He has kept among us in times of peace, standing on it without their constant knowledge of the Thank you. Great job. He is affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jur jur jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged our, by our laws giving his assent to their acts of pre pretended legislation for quartering large bodies of armed troops among us, for protecting them by mock trial, from punishment for any murders which they should commit in inhibitions of these states, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world, for imposing, for imposing tax of us within our consent, for depriving, benef depriving us in many cases to benefits of trial by jury, for transporting us beyond seas to be tried to pretend offenses. Thank you. Great job. For abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government, and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. For taking away our characters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our governments. For suspending our own legislators and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated.
vindicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation, and tyranny. Already begun with circumstances of cruelty and per perfidy scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. He is the transporting large enemies of the fortune and making the complete works of death and delusion to the high seas. Oh, he has consumed the fellow city, captured on the seas and the bare arms against the country. Executioners of their friends and brethren to fall themselves by their bare hands. He has excited domestic insurrections amongst us and endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, whose known rule of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is, is unfit to be the ruler of, of, of free people. Nor have we been wanting in attentions to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our emigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity. We have, and we have conjured them by the times of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and consanguinity. We must therefore acquiesce in the necessary, which denounces our separation, and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war, in peace, friends. We therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress, assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do, in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are, and of right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiances to the British crown, and that all political connections between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortune, and our sacred honor. I would like to thank all the kids who volunteered, especially some of the older kids who were um, involuntarily volunteered toward the end because we needed a few extra readers. Uh -huh.